thank God for the Birmingham Mass Choir. Uh, hallelujah. Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. Thank God for the Birmingham Mass Choir. Man, praise God today. Uh, what a spiritual introduction for our home daily Bible reading session for today. Oh, my God. He's worthy to be praised. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. I, I couldn't help but to let it play. I wanted to just do five minutes, but Lord, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to your name. Hosanna in the highest. God is worthy to be praised. Oh, Lord, thank you for coming into this house on today. Amen. It is a plum pleasing pleasure to bring you the word of God from the second St. John uh, Missionary Baptist Church right here in West Memphis, Arkansas. Our phone number is right here on the screen. If you desire to give your life to Christ, uh, just call that number 870-735-6300 and we will be glad, glad to introduce you to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am Pastor Stephen Chipman with our home daily Bible reading for today. Let me take care of a few house details today. I want to make sure that you know about this special event that's coming up on tomorrow, and I want you to see it for yourself. It's back in person Bible study at Second St. John Church at 305 Ingram Boulevard in West Memphis, Arkansas, 72301. In person, Bible study starts at 6 p.m. on Wednesday, March 2nd, in the Reginald Robertson Family Life Center. Start studying with us. Pastor Stephen and Rosalind would love to have you attend. We have open discussions, fellowship, and instruction. Be built up in the Word. Pack a pew out. Sunday, March 13th, we are looking for you. 2nd St. John Church, located, 305 Ingram Boulevard in West Memphis, Arkansas, 72301. This is it, a chance to show our faith, by coming to give ourselves to Him. We are excited. We believe that Jesus did not bring us, this far, to forget, about Him. Pastor Stephen and Rosalind Chitman are urging all friends and relatives, to be in attendance. Invite all you know to. Pack a pew out Sunday, March 13th, 2022. Hello, yes, of course, the dog doesn't start barking until it's time for us to go into our home daily Bible reading. And uh, we are getting ready to have a session today. We're about to pray. We only have 30 minutes, but I couldn't help but to thank God for the praises that were offered by the Birmingham Mass Choir, amen, that did our intro song today. And I want you to know, amen, about those announcements that were just made right now let us go into our prayer before we start our study heavenly father we thank you today for what you're about to do during this space of time oh god heavenly father we thank you lord that you sit high you look low that you're everywhere all at the same time heavenly father we praise you for being almighty god lord thank you for being jehovah jireh our provider jehovah to sit you our righteousness we thank you oh god Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving us of our sins, for we have come short. Lord, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Now, Lord, lead us, guide us, and teach us your word. Lord, we pray now, O oh God, that you will give us an understanding of your word, that we may apply it to our lives. We thank you, O oh God, for all of the listeners, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that, Lord, your Holy Spirit is going to grab us by our hands and our minds, O oh God, and teach us and lead us and guide us. Lord, we pray for those who are sick among us, Lord, that you would, Lord, cast out sickness and disease, O oh God, that you would heal their bodies and their minds. Lord, we pray that you would save the lost today. To your name be the glory, honor, and praise. Lead the way. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Amen. All right. It's time to get on down in the word of God. Uh, we're coming from Isaiah out of the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1 through 10. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1 through 10 is our subject lesson for today. Let's get right on in it. All right, I've arrived there, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1 through 10. I'm in the New International Reader's Version of the Bible. And of course, we're going to have some interruption. My dog is barking at the neighbor's dog through the window outdoors. But we're going to give God all the glory and praise today. And we're going to go ahead and walk through the Word of God at this time Turn your Bibles, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1 through 10. I'm going to read, and then we're going to talk about our verses for today. All right. Starting with verse number 1. Cyrus is my anointed king. I take hold of his right hand. I give him the power to bring nations under his control. I help him strip kings of their power to go to war against him. I break city gates open so he can go through them. I say to him, I will march out ahead of you. I will make the mountains level. I will break down bronze gates. I will cut through their heavy iron bars. I will give you treasures that are hidden away in dark places. I will give you riches that are stored up in secret places. Then you will know that I am the Lord. I am the God of Israel. I'm sending for you by name. Cyrus, I'm sending for you by name. I'm doing it for the good of the family of Jacob. They are my servants. I'm doing it for Israel. They are my chosen people. You do not know anything about me, but I'm giving you a title of honor. I am the Lord. There is no other Lord. I am the one and only God. You do not know anything about me, but I will make you strong. Then people will know there is no God but me. Everyone from where the sun rises in the east to where it sets in the west will know it. I am the Lord. There is no other Lord. I cause light to shine. I also create darkness. I bring good times. I also create hard times. I do all of those things. I am the Lord. Rain down godliness, you heavens above. Let the clouds shower it down. Let the earth open wide to receive it. Let freedom spring to life. Let godliness grow along with it. I have created all those things. I am the Lord. How terrible it will be for anyone who argues with his maker. He is like a broken piece of pottery lying on the ground. Does clay say to a potter, what are you making? Does a pot say, you don't have any skill. How terrible it would be for anyone who says to his father, why did you give me life? How terrible for anyone who says to his mother, why have you brought me into the world? That is the word of God for the people of God. Isaiah chapter 45, verse number 1 through 10 is our topic's subject reading for today and let's get right over here where we can identify our topic for today our topic for today being god's instrument that's our topic reading for today being god's instrument 
Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1 through 10. Also, let me uh, say this to you. Our unit topic for the month of March is liberating Passover. That's right. Our topic for the month of March is liberating Passover. And as we go through these home daily Bible readings, we'll get more of a uh, more of a clearer meaning of liberating Passover. Of course, we all know what the Passover was. It is when God allowed the deaf angel to pass over the children of Israel, uh, bringing them out of bondage in Egypt. Amen. Liberating, to set free, liberate, to set free. So a liberating Passover. Amen. So we'll get into more of that. That's our monthly topic for March. But our home daily Bible reading topic is being God's instrument. And we're going to get right down into talking about being God's instrument. This is very important. We're about to start in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah is known as the eagle-eyed prophet. He could see further than any other prophet. It was taught to me that he could see the cross and the crown. Amen. But he could not see the valley between the cross and the crown. And that was the time of the church. Amen. Three C's. Cross, church, and crown. Isaiah could see farther than any other prophet. Some people could see the cross. Some of the prophets could see the crown. But Isaiah was able to see them both. And the only thing he couldn't see was the valley between the cross and the crown, better known as the church age. He did not see that. So we're in the book of Isaiah, and, and he has prophesied about Cyrus uh, being anointed as the king, amen, over Judah and over uh, Babylon, amen. And it is taught that he allows the children of Israel and supplies them with resources to build back the temple and to go to the homeland and worship God. And he liberates them or sets them free to go about that task. But here at this time in this lesson for today, Cyrus is an unlikely instrument to be used by God. Lord have mercy. And it takes a lot of maturity to understand that God can do whatsoever he pleases, that God can use whomever he pleases. You know, we say when we praise God that God is sovereign. That means God is self-sufficient. He rules and super rules all by himself. So God is able to take anything that he has created and use it for his purpose. <laughs> I know there are some people we say that God cannot use, but uh, you know, God can take a crooked stick and hit a straight lick. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> uh, we were in the book of Habakkuk, a psalm on last month, and Habakkuk had the same type of uh, uh, bewilderment about God using uh, instruments that he thought were not uh, possible or that God would not use. But God can use whomsoever he desires with or without their knowledge to bring about his purpose. That's why sometimes I say God has Satan on a string. <laughs> oh, Satan is not using God, but God has the ability to take Satan's purposes and straighten them out for his own glorious purposes. Amen. In the text today, amen, we're going to get down and we're going to look at Cyrus. Amen. Cyrus was a uh, a heathen, 
a non-Jew. He was a Gentile, and God was about to use him as an instrument to liberate his people. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So we need to look at these verses as we step down through God using this unlikely instrument. And our subject today for our lesson again is being God's instrument. That's right, being God's instrument. So let us just talk about uh, some of these verses uh, for a moment as we look uh, down through here. Amen. Go back to verse number one in our study. And uh, we want to look at Cyrus is my anointed king. And we notice here that it says the word anointed. <laughs> Amen. It's talking about him as the anointed king. And, and amen, and I, just like me, you're probably saying to yourself, how, how could Cyrus be anointed king? Because God is about to use Cyrus for his purpose. That's right. God is about to use Cyrus for his purpose. And I know in, in the Jewish society, they would use the word for the king as being anointed. Uh, but God is using Cyrus for his purposes, and he is empowering him to get the job done. That's what I like to say about the word anointing. It is God's special ability to be able to get the job done with little effort, with little human effort. So Cyrus is my, God says, anointed king. And look at the word of God. It says, I take hold of his right hand. I give him the power to bring nations under his control. Notice that. Notice that. Notice that. God is going to take. That's what the anointing really means. God takes and gives the power to get the job done. He's going to take Cyrus, an unlikely source, a heathen, and use him for his purpose. He anoints him and he gives him the ability to get the job done without a whole lot of personal effort. Look at what God says. I help him strip kings of their power to go to war against him. Did you notice that? God says, you know, I've anointed him and I'm the one that's going to take away the ability of the kings that are going to try to come against him. I'm going to take their power to go to war against Cyrus. Notice that. And Cyrus is a heathen. But God being sovereign can use whomsoever he chooses. Look at what God also says about him through the prophet Isaiah. I break city gates open so he can go through them. That's what the anointing does. It gives you the ability to do things without a lot of human effort. God says, I break city gates open so that Cyrus can go through them. I say to him, I will march out ahead of you. God says, I'm going to march out ahead of you, Cyrus. I will make the mountains level, or I will make the exalted level. I will break down bronze gates. I'm going to break down the strongholds for you. I'm going to uh, allow you to get through things that would hinder others. I will cut through their heavy iron bars. You're going to do things almost that are unheard of with God's anointing. Look at what is possible. I, I don't want you to look at Cyrus and him as an individual. I want you to see God's anointing giving the ability to do supernatural things. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Being God's instrument. Amen. Look at what it does 
for you. And, and I believe that Cyrus was an, an unknowing source that God used, that even though God was using him uh, without him really being a student and a, a person who worshiped him. But God can take unlikely instruments and use them for his purposes. In the book of Habakkuk, one of the minor prophets, it shows us how God can take heathens and Gentiles and use them for his purposes so that he, God, can get the glory out of them. Hmm. And even the children of Israel weren't really sure of how God was going to work this out. And look at what God says here in his word, verse number three. I will give you, Cyrus, treasures that are hidden away in dark places. I'm going to give you stuff uh, that you didn't even know was even there. <laughs> look at God in the anointing. I will give you riches that are stored up in secret places, Cyrus, heathen king, who's going to be used for God's purpose of freeing up the children of Israel to go back and build up his temple and to worship him and to give them the necessary resources. See, see, God knows how to do this thing. Watch this. God says, then you will know that I am the Lord because I'm going to give Cyrus hidden treasures. I'm going to give him, uh, give you riches that are stored up in secret place. And then God says, then you're going to know I am the Lord. I am the God of Israel. I'm sending for you by name, Cyrus. I'm calling you. Who can resist the call of God? <laughs> Cyrus, I'm sending for you by name, King of Persia. I'm sending for you. I'm doing it for the good of the family of Jacob. Oh, Lord, how, much, how can a, a heathen be good for God's children, the descendants of Jacob. How can this be that God can use a nobody in the kingdom of God and use them for the good of his people? See, some of y'all ain't getting this lesson here today. Some of y'all ain't getting this lesson. God did not have a godly person. He didn't use a godly person for this particular job. God can use whomsoever he desires. Oh boy, I'm talking to somebody today. A lot of y'all with all these Christian collars up in the air and don't think God can allow a Gentile, a non-Christian to come directed by God to help you when you are in distress and in trouble. God can send somebody by name to help you that is not a member of your church, not on the deacon board, not the pastor, not the choir member, not the usher, not the good brother sitting behind you on a pew, not the good sister who knows how to cook great soup, but God can send for a heathen to do his will. He can anoint them to do it. Lord, have mercy. I, I, I'm getting happy. I got to get out of here because the choir really sung. When we got, I'm doing it for Israel. Why? They my servants. I'm doing it for Israel. I'm using Cyrus the Gentile to do this work for me. I'm doing it for Israel. They are my chosen people. You do not know anything about me. That's what he's telling Cyrus. You don't even know me. But I'm giving you a title of honor. How can God do that? Because he's sovereign. 
he rules and super rules. Verse 5, he tells you, I am the Lord. There is no other Lord. I am the one and only God. That's how I can do it. He said, you don't know anything about me, but I will make you strong. That's what the anointing does. It makes us strong. Touch not my, my, touch not mine anointed. You can't do nothing to them anyway. God done made them strong. Then people would know there is no God but me. Then people would know there's no God but me who can take somebody who don't even know me and use them for my purpose. Then people will know there's no God but me. Somebody said, well, how do you know the Lord? Because I know what I prayed for. I saw God bring it to pass with people who didn't even know the Lord, but God still brought it to pass. That's how I know it was God. Yes, Lord. Oh, Everyone from where the sun rises in the east to where it sets in the west will know it. I am the Lord. They're going to know it. There's no other Lord. I cause light to shine. I also create darkness. I bring good times. I also create hard times. Listen to God. I create good times, but I also make hard times. Oh, what you talking about? <laughs> I make the sun to shine, and I also bring the rain. I also create hard. I do all those things because I am the Lord. Rain down godliness, you heavens above. Let the clouds shower it down. Let the earth open wide to receive it. Let freedom spring to life. Let godliness grow along with it. I created all those things. How come? I am the Lord. How terrible it would be for anyone who argues with his maker. Why are you sitting around arguing about, I don't think it was the Lord. Lord, you can even do this. You can't use no heathen. Look, look at all, you're making all this argument. Who are you? It's like a broken piece of pottery lying on the ground. Does the clay say to a potter, what are you making? Does a pot say you don't have any skill? No, a pot can't do nothing and can't say nothing. You making idol gods out of a pot that somebody can break. You making gods and guardians out of a car that can break. You making gods and guardians out of something that God created, a human being. You better not use no human being as no god. Amen. Making light God, Zoaster, be your God. And God created light. God created darkness. I dare you to compare them to me. I am God. And why are you making all these pots in the gods and all this, let light be your God and all that kind of mess? You need to know I made all that stuff. Terrible for anyone who says to his father, why did you give me life? How terrible for anyone who says to his mother, why have you brought me into the world? You don't have a right to question why your daddy had you. You don't have a right to question your mama about why she brought you into the world because she carried you. You didn't carry her. Your daddy helped make you. You didn't make him. Lord, you don't have a right to question that. Lord, have mercy up in this house. God does what he desires to do to bring about his good will. Lord, how mercy. I done got happy. I got to get on out of here. My, 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 my time is up. I got to get on out of here, y'all. Y'all, I got to get on out of here. Being God's instrument. You may not even understand how God is using you. But I pray you get to know him. Being God's instrument. God supplied the resources. God supplied the power to get the job done. That's the anointing, the power to get the job done. <laughs> Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. We have had a plum pleasing good time in the word of God. I thank you 
for being part of our home daily Bible reading on today. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1 through 10, Cyrus, a Gentile king, amen, overtaking Babylonia in order to set God's people free to build the temple, to supply them with resources, amen, amen, all under God's power and anointing. Ain't the Lord all right? He says, because I used an unlikely person, a person that didn't even know me, now people will know that I am God. You know, it's kind of like uh, 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 when you ask God to provide you with food <laughs> and, and this uh, unlikely source who doesn't even go to church, not even been born again, he allows them to bring it to your door and give it to you. He empowers them to get it. He puts it on their mind to do it and he does it for your good because you're his chosen people. Oh, you don't hear me. You ought to be clapping out there. You ought to be clapping. I ought to hear some praise the Lord. How he can take a doctor that don't even know the Lord, who hadn't even been to church, and he can operate on you. And he can bring to pass those things that set in order the things that God would have for you. Lord, have mercy. God can take an, an unsaved real estate agent. I know we like to use people of the household of faith and all of that. But when you get right down to it, God knows exactly what to do and exactly how to answer. I'm calling, I'm telling you right now, if I were you, I'd get to know the Lord. I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. I gotta preach in me and I gotta get out of here. Lord, you please get in the word of God, go to church somewhere. The Lord is waiting for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word that was delivered today. Thank you for this space of time. Thank you for ears to hear. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing. A faith cometh by hearing and that by the word of God. Thank you for your word, O oh God. Oh, we love you with our whole heart, mind, soul, and body. Lord, we love you today. We pray for the distressed. We pray for the oppressed. Lord, we pray for those, Lord, who are continuously going through trouble and turbulence, oh God. Lord, we pray, oh God, that you would pull us through. Lord, we pray, oh God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for you being God and God all by yourself. Lord, we lean and depend on you. Without you, we are nothing. We cannot make it without you. Lord, we pray, Lord, for those who are lost, that they might know you. Heal them, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I love you and anything you can do about it. I want you to remember these uh, two announcements coming right at you. I got Bible study starting tomorrow. It's back. In-person Bible study at 2nd St. John Church at 305 Ingram Boulevard in West Memphis, Arkansas, 72301. In person. Bible study starts at 6 p.m. on Wednesday, March 2nd, in the Reginald Robertson Family Life Center. Start studying with us. Pastor Stephen and Rosalind would love to have you attend. We have open discussions, fellowship, and instruction. Be built up in the Word. Pack a pew out. Sunday, March 13th, we are looking for you. 2nd St. John Church, located, 305 Ingram Boulevard in West Memphis, Arkansas, 72301. This is it, a chance to show our faith, by coming to give ourselves to Him. We are excited. We believe that Jesus did not bring us, this far, to forget, about Him. Pastor Stephen and Rosalind Chitman are urging all friends and relatives, to be in attendance. Invite all you know to, pack up you out Sunday March 13, 2022.